Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to uh, another video. So, I had this in the back of my mind for a while and I wish I probably would have made something like this a little bit sooner. Uh, there's been a few videos out there, but not a ton. So I was wanting to put together sort of a list of things for people that are looking for or they're pondering the idea of picking up a 2011 to 14 GT500. Now I know there's quite a difference between the 2011s and 12s and the 13 and 14. So I was kind of break apart the main differences between the, those two and also particular things uh, to look for in any of those prior to deciding to make a purchase between a 2011 all the way up to a 2014 S97 GT500. All right, so probably one of the main things that I think anyone should try to consider when uh, looking for a GT500 is try to get a stock one or as close to stock as possible. So the good thing about buying one that's stock is you know chances are the car wasn't beat on, it wasn't harassed, it wasn't torn up, or at least as much, unless the car was previously put back to stock. So when I bought my GT500, I've had it now for about four and a half years. I th This thing was completely stock. Um, technically, I'm the second owner of the car. I bought it with just a hair under 6,000 miles. It didn't have, it even had the factory air intake on it. It didn't have anything on it. Um, and it was kind of a random purchase. I went to go just go take a look at it and test drive. And we were like, let's just go take a look at it. And, you know, obviously one thing led to another. And then, well, here we are. And secondly, too, probably something that goes in line with that also is try to find one that has low miles or as low miles as possible. I know a lot of the people that do own these types of cars don't drive them at all whatsoever. Um, these cars are made to be driven. Now at the same time, I don't drive mine every day. I just drive it on days like today, on the weekends, when it's nice out. A benefit to trying to find one with low miles is, you know the person probably took pretty good care of the car. The majority of people that drive these cars that have low miles on them, uh, they're probably more garage kept they do regular maintenance on them and chances are with a combination of that and finding one that was stock you're probably in better shape um, when it comes to the overall I guess health of the car um, now with that said obviously you're gonna probably pay a little higher in price um, if you find one with that slow miles the 11 to 14 GT 500s they do range in price so the 2011 212, which is what we have here is a 2012, obviously. Um, though, okay, so four and a half years ago, when I bought this car, I paid 40,000. So I paid 40,000 for this thing back in 2017 with about, let's say, roughly 6,000 miles on it. The price at the time for the 13 and 14s were between 50 to 60,000, if not higher, for the same car. Not the, the same car, excuse me. The same mileage of those cars. Now, what's the difference between the 11 and 12s and the 13 and 14s? So before I get more into that, I just want to just clarify. I know that a lot of people that are watching this are probably people that found this on like a Facebook uh, GT500 page or S197 page. And the majority of those people, yes, clearly, you guys know a difference between the 11 and 12s and 13 and 14s. But, you know, for anyone that is not 100% educated on what separates the 11 and 12s and 13 and 14s, this is mainly for you guys. And um, I'm trying to just break this down as much as I can. Um, and for anyone that is watching this, um, I just, you know, like I said, I have a list of things to look for. And if I'm leaving something out or there's something that I should have included, go ahead and just leave a comment and let me know. Um, these are just probably the things that I would have looked for at the time when I was in the market for uh, purchasing one of these cars. Okay, so the 11 and 12s come with the 5.4 and the uh, 13, 14s come with the 5.8. Uh, mine, it's not quite the best example with trying to compare the difference between a 13 and 14 and the 11 and 12s and what a factory 2012 supercharger looks like. So I got the VMP Gen 2R. Um, 
the 1112s, you're looking at 550 factory horsepower. 1314s, you're looking at 662. So now with the prices of the 11 and 12s, you could probably pick up one. If you're looking at anywhere between mileage, maybe 15 to like 25,000 miles, you could probably pick one up for mid 40s. I think you can probably get these for around 45, between 40 to 45,000, I think. Uh, now if you want to go 13 and 14, those, on average, depending on mileage, obviously, of course, those usually range about, let's say, between seven to ten thousand dollars more than the uh, thirteen and fourteen. I'm sorry, than the eleven and twelves, because the five point eight, it's more sought after. You want the bigger displacement, higher factory horsepower. Um, so you are going to pay a little bit extra for the five point eight. So one thing I would probably tell anyone to look for when Purchasing, especially if you're looking at the 11 and 12s. Um, anyone that owns 11 and 12, they know exactly what I'm about to say when it comes to shifting uh, the first to second in these cars. Um, if you're trying to go from first to second relatively quickly, it is notorious for the second gear lockout. Now, the issue with the second gear lockouts, it doesn't happen every time you try to go from first to second, but if you're trying to like speed shift or gaps on on the highway and you're doing like well if you're on the highway you probably won't be in second gear anyway probably more than likely you'll be in third but if you're trying to go from like a dig um it's gonna become an issue and it's gonna be it's it gets annoying so one of the first things i'd probably recommend to do to wipe that out like i said shifter clutch you shouldn't have any issues another thing i'd say to look for if the GT500 has stripes. You're gonna want to look for like if the stripes have any cracking or any peeling, or if the striping doesn't go down in all the creases and the corners. Uh, take a look at all that stuff because if if you know if all this stuff has cracking and peeling, uh, probably chances are the car, like I said earlier, it w wasn't kept in a garage. It was kept outside a lot. It wasn't well maintained on the exterior. Um, another thing to look for too is if the paint. Look for chips in the paint. A lot of these, um, especially on the hoods, like in these pieces here, they have a lot of chipping paint because this is a aluminum hood. The factory aluminum hoods are actually quite a bit lighter than if you go like an aftermarket Cervini hood, like a Ram Air hood. Those are made out of fiberglass and all the layers of the fiberglass adds a lot of extra weight uh, to the hood. The factory hood, I don't think there's a lot of options when it comes to weight reduction. Um, so I would recommend personally, keep the factory hood unless you have to switch it out if you have like a bigger supercharger or whatnot. But if you do have one with a factory hood, um, just keep an eye out for any chipping, any uh, rust along here, um, especially along these areas here. It's been... It's been an issue that I've seen on like a lot of cars and you know obviously you could do touch up paint and stuff like that and take care of it but look for those kind of issues if you don't have that kind of issues then uh, chances are the car was uh, taken care so if you have Recaros Recaros aren't cheap so a lot of people when they have these types of seats there's a lot of rubbing and cracking and a lot of just wear and tear especially on the outer side of the seat you know on Obviously, that's caused from the constant getting in and out of the car, and people, a lot of people, don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's just, they don't think of, oh, the constant back and forth, the friction, it's going to cause cracking, it's going to cause wear, it's just going to, and it's going to be an issue if it gets to a point to, you're going to have to probably replace, you know, the seats, and that, you know, with the cars, man, it's not cheap. Especially if you want them to look factory, unless you plan on switching it out anyway, and it's not that big of an issue. But that's one of the first things to look for. I got like a little bit, like a little bit right here, but that was like that since I I bought it. I'm pretty particular about not trying to make my back and my butt rub against that as I'm constantly getting in and out of the cars, because it's something that I've always looked for. So keep an eye on that. Make sure all that is in pristine shape. 
Try to find out if the car is tuned or if it had a tune on it. Try and look and see if the car has a tuning device like an X4 or any of those handheld that just plug into the OBD2. Um, if the car doesn't have one and the car feels like it has an aftermarket tune on it, the chances are he sold that separately before he either sold or traded in the car. I mean, that's that's another reason why I say it's always a good idea to try to find one that's stock. Because if you purchase a car that has a tune on it, you don't know how aggressive the tune is or not aggressive it is. Like, taking the car for a, a test drive can answer a lot of those questions, but you just don't know the details of the tune. Like, how much timing has been pulled or added or, you know, XYZ. There's just a lot of things that are unknown if you don't know the details of the tune. So... Try to find out if it has a tune on it, if it has a handheld, um, or who tuned it. Um, these are all things that are good to know prior before trying to make a purchase. This might seem a little bit random, but this Alcantara or Suede or whatever you like to call it, make sure a lot of this isn't worn or just look like it has a lot of like wear and tear on it. Because the oil is from your hands when you're constantly grabbing that it basically turns that into a different material almost and it just it just looks like shit so if try to see if there's not a lot of like wear and tear on this or even like up here a lot of that will go hand in hand with this because if you're not taking care of the seats and you don't give a shit about that chances are you don't give a shit about that either so Keep an eye on all this stuff. Make sure all this is in good shape because a lot of people, they just grab one certain area. I try to avoid touching that as much as possible. I usually got my hands down here or up here. I don't usually touch a lot of that unless I have to. So that's another thing to keep an eye on. You know, just small things. Small things like that um, will let you know how the previous owner took care of the car. One thing I forgot to mention while we had the hood open is try to just make sure the car has a catch can. Um, if it has one, that's probably the only mod that I would say that is okay to have. Because um, especially on the passenger side, the passenger side gets a lot of blow-by. Driver side, man, I you know every time I change the oil, this thing doesn't really have like a drop of oil in it. Uh, I just got it on this side, so it matches. And just because, what the hell. But... It's especially necessary here on the passenger side. Every time I change my oil, I take it, I check it out, I drain it. It's usually about half full. So that every three to 5,000 miles, however often you change your oil, um, it catches all that blow by back. So man, it, that's important to have. At least make sure it has a catch can or if you purchase it and it doesn't have a catch can, try, I mean, that's probably the first thing i recommend for anything for any car for that matter try to just make sure it has a catch can so if you're particularly looking at a 13 or 14 gp500 but for some reason you know it has the factory 11 and 12 taillights so the taillights that come on this car from the factory if it has the older ones that probably tells me the car was in some kind of accident and it's a lot cheaper to get the factory 11 and 12 taillights than to go back and purchase the 13 and 14s because these 13 and 14 taillights are not cheap. And a lot of people, they swap out the 11 and 12s for these 13 and 14s, not the other way around. So if that is the case, car was in probably some kind of accident and it's a lot cheaper to go with the older taillights. Slap it together and either sell and trade in the car without spending a lot of cash. So definitely stay away from something like that if that's the case. Anyway guys, hope that helps. I just wanted to put together a quick video of things you should probably look for when you're trying to purchase a 1114 GT500. And obviously it applies to other years too as well. I'm just using the 11 and 12 as a reference because I have a, a 12. Um, just good things to look out for. Now obviously there's other things you should probably look for out for also as well. If there's anything I left out that I probably should have thrown in here, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. Um, I'm sure there's other things I probably could have thrown in here as well. I just, you know, I forgot it and I didn't mention it. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, go ahead, do me a favor, hit subscribe. Um, I have a goal here of hitting a thousand here soon, so help me out with that. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.